You've all seen Tesla FSD handle the chaos of Europe perfectly, right? My infamous Cybertruck videos or the official demos running in multiple countries. But that was always the latest and greatest FSD 14 on hardware 4. What about the millions of you with older Teslas? Is your car obsolete? Will you be left behind? This video answers these exact questions because I got invited to another crazy ride along, this time in a 5 year old Legacy Model 3. We're talking old cameras, old computer and even the ancient Intel MCU. So we took FSD 12.6.4 and threw it into the nightmare streets of Prague to see if it would fail. And the result was honestly embarrassing. For the new cars. Let's drive. Immediately we are thrown into chaos, just entering the inner city of Prague from the south. There's a lot of construction going around, dense morning traffic, but the most confusing adversary is the city itself. Pay attention to the lanes and road markings. Any other driving assistance system based on old school lane keeping would be unusable here. But not this five year old Tesla. The fact that it knows which lines are the correct ones here is pretty impressive. And these are exactly the types of situations which require an intelligent solution and can't be solved by just adding more and more sensors. Driving isn't hard because the world is hard to see. Driving is hard because the world is hard to understand. So why is it so significant that even a hardware 3 Tesla can do this? When we're talking about hardware 3, we're talking about half of all Teslas ever made. Approximately four and a half million vehicles. Their entire global production from 2019 to early 2023. The current generation, hardware 4, is also the only one receiving official self-driving updates in places like Australia. And when FSD finally gets released in Europe, hardware 4 will probably be the only cars that will get it at least for some time. The skeptics also like to say that Tesla has abandoned hardware 3 users and that FSD will never be fully solved for this last gen. So now it's up to you to decide by watching this video and then answering this question. Can this car drive itself? For new viewers, as long as you can see the blue tentacle on the screen, the car is doing everything on its own. There's just one exception. But now to our first complicated intersection. Our car is signaling to the left but hasn't quite entered the intersection far enough to assert itself. So the white van takes the opportunity and drives in front of us against the rules. We definitely had the right of way here, but human drivers in Prague are ruthless and always rushing somewhere. FSD 12 was never optimized or localized for European streets and signs. So it either doesn't quite understand that you aren't supposed to stop at a yield sign if the way is clear, or it's just too scared to enter another construction site complete with cobblestones and tram tracks. But as soon as the driver taps the accelerator pedal just a little bit, our car regains confidence and executes flawlessly. What follows is an absolutely nerve wracking experience. Trusting a rusty old self driving robot with our lives just so the world can see that Tesla has solved generalized autonomy. If you appreciate the science, tap the like button down below. Dodging a garbage truck while driving on tram tracks through a construction zone also known as Prague. A truly ridiculous driving scenario which FSD handles with utmost grace. The driver is just experiencing an absolute culture shock because unlike me, he's not a local and doesn't have that much experience driving around here. Which is probably why he misses the mandatory lane change and instead lets FSD continue forward. Now, be honest, would you have done this correctly or was the situation too confusing even for you? Let us know in the comments. As you can see, this is the best worst city we could have chosen to push FSD to its limits. And frankly, if it wasn't for the stress test, we would just take the subway because while Prague is an absolute nightmare for drivers, the public transport is one of the best in the world. 
We have reached our first destination safely. So let's punch in new coordinates and let the car drive to its doom through an obstacle course designed in medieval times to confuse drivers across centuries. Next stop, Narodní Třída, the same place where most of my viral self-driving Cybertruck clips were made. A perfect benchmark for a fair hardware comparison. It takes a whole second here for FSD to react to the green light, but then it redeems its slow reaction time by politely letting a pedestrian cross safely during a right turn. After finishing the turn, it changes lanes to the left to be ready for the upcoming left turn, which is great, although it could have easily stayed in the right lane as well, because both of them are ultimately going to be left turn only. You'll see in just a minute. This highlights an interesting technical problem of making the vision system work in tandem with the navigation. And navigation has been one of the last, let's say, unresolved problems of FSD all around the world. Self-driving is an absolute luxury in dense traffic like this, where you constantly have to react to everything that's happening around you, start and stop and then start again, and the way humans do it usually results in traffic jams, even if nothing else is really blocking the road. If all cars were self-driving today, the number of traffic jams would greatly diminish, as would road accidents, but we'll leave that argument for later. Now check out this extremely tight left turn, where it might be challenging for some not to curb their wheels. FSD handles it quite nicely, but the real trouble starts right now. And the culprit is speed control. FSD is still holding on to the speed limit of 30 km per hour, but the standard city speed limit is actually 50. And I bet everyone around is driving even faster than that. This nice white Škoda is the only one probably letting us in right now, but FSD12 is just not assertive enough to take the opportunity. So while our slow car is desperately trying to get to the slow right lane, the Prague drivers are mercilessly pushing forward and no one is letting us in, resulting in quite the trouble. Finally, it takes us to the right. But the tailgating van behind us lets us know he doesn't appreciate the slow speed, even though it gracefully gets us through the upcoming green light without having to stop. You're welcome, aggressive driver. Another turn gets us onto the bridge which leads directly to the dancing house, so now you have a famous landmark to look forward to. And if you look to the right, you'll see Prague's exquisite approach to cycling infrastructure. Now, in boring, safety-obsessed countries, they put actual physical barriers between cyclists and traffic. But here, we prefer the Darwinian merge. Notice how that nice white safety line just gives up as we approach the end of the bridge. That isn't bad planning. That is a calculated design feature meant to precisely deposit the cyclist directly under the wheels of a turning delivery van. This is Jiraskovo Namnesti in front of the dancing house, one of the worst intersections in the entire city for an automated system. Just look at the completely random lane lines on the ground and all of the signs and arrows. We're begging the lady not to step into the road right in front of us and luckily she obliges and lets us continue on our way next to the tram stop. If you appreciate the video so far, consider becoming a channel member. Not only will you support independent European self-driving videos, there's also a few interesting perks, including custom emojis and a self-upgrading robot badge next to your name in the comments. FSD12 here could also use an upgrade because it doesn't understand the green arrow and therefore is extremely hesitant to advance until the driver pushes the accelerator once again to sort of confirm the maneuver. After that, the car proceeds confidently, as should you, regarding channel membership. It's just a few dollars each month. And, most importantly, members get early access to all new videos, so click the join button under the video to be one of the first to see new advancements. Thank you for at least considering supporting the channel, it helps us a lot. This upcoming situation is extremely interesting as it is complicated. We're supposed to yield to traffic coming from the right, but there's also a pedestrian crossing right after the intersection. 
FSD correctly yields to the dark van, but then it proceeds and loses sight of the European triangular yield sign. When another car approaches after that, it's not sure anymore whether it should yield or not. And I'm not entirely sure if the yield sign just disappeared from the context window because a certain amount of time has passed since the car saw it, or more likely FSD12 just doesn't know this sign at all yet, because it was never trained in Europe locally. <laughs> and now the exact yield sign again, in front of an even more challenging intersection. This one is outright dangerous, because we have both cars and trams coming through from multiple directions, and the tram that's turning right completely blocks our view to the left, leaving FSD blind. At one point it starts driving, but then quickly realizes it has to wait some more until traffic from the left is gone and we can finally proceed with this absolutely diabolical, unprotected left turn. The average, inexperienced driver would probably sit inside this intersection for a long, long time, because decent sized, comfortable gaps are virtually non-existent here. This is where FSD 14 would most likely do a better job, just because of the improved reaction times, assertiveness and overall confidence. But as you can see, even 12 manages just fine. Takes into account both the tram and the crossing pedestrian and off we go onto the cobblestone paved tram tracks hell once again. Despite all of these challenges, FSD stays smooth and looks like it knows what it's doing, which is far more than I could ask of a nearly two-year-old system on a five-year-old car. Just let that sink in. Name a single other car manufacturer that could pull this off with their latest and greatest. Go ahead, I'll wait. As you can see, the number of parked cars in downtown Prague is absolutely horrifying, and it's only going to get worse from here. That's mostly because residential parking is just shy of $60. Not per week, not even per month, for an entire year. Yes, you can put your smelly old car onto one of the most valuable pieces of real estate in the world and just leave it there for a year for 60 freaking dollars. What you see in front of you is the result of this genius policy. FSD gracefully slows down for a randomly jaywalking pedestrian, but then, rather hilariously, abruptly stops for a weirdly parked smart car, which kind of looks like it's turning our way. When it accelerates again, it isn't afraid of driving just inches away from a pedestrian on the right while staying cautious and safe, but then the inevitable happens. FSD12 truly gets stuck because of its one missing feature and it doesn't quite make it through the next left turn because of this geniusly parked white Ford. That's right, FSD12 can't yet reverse, but you can clearly see it would love to do so, helplessly turning the wheel in just the right way to reverse. So we finally did it. We broke FSD in Prague. But wait for when we officially get version 14. That one will blow your mind. If you want to compare the difference, check out the most horrifying moments from our Cybertruck FSD drive through Prague. That one is already running FSD 14. Just click the middle of your screen right now and continue watching.